other compromises aren't as worrisome. There's only a minuscule change to trunk space. Good news, there wasn't much to lose and only a 113 pound weight penalty that comes with those metal panels and power mechanisms. That's really not that big of a deal, especially when there are dynamic improvements. Engineers retuned the suspension slightly, both to counter that extra weight and to address the regular Miata's tendency to land on its bump stops when pushed hard. It was something Fiat's engineers massaged out of the 124 Spider, and now with changes to the rear bump stops and one rear bushing, the RF makes it easier for the driver to balance the car at the limit. The steering was also given a little extra effort and a bit of slack on center, but it's not such an obvious change that we noticed. And really, unless you drive the snot out of both cars back to back, it seems unlikely that you'll be able to tell the RF and regular convertible Miata apart. That's a very good thing. Both are blessed with the same divine throttle response and six-speed manual transmission, the little 2.0-liter engine that's equal parts energetic and efficient, and that quintessentially nimble and playful nature. It's a Miata through and through. However, it's also a more expensive one. For starters, it can only be had in club and grand touring trim levels, there's no base sport. It also demands a $2,755 price premium over a similarly equipped Miata soft top, meaning the cheapest tow ref starts at $31,555 versus the most basic Miata at $24,915. The comparable Miata Club Soft Pop starts at $28,800. There aren't any feature content differences apart from an upgraded instrument cluster display, the power-operated top, and exclusively optional machine grey paint and tan leather.